हेलो डियर व्यूअर्स वेलकम टू द स्पेशल सेशन ब्रॉट टू यू बाय विजन आई रिगार्डिंग यूपीएससी सीएससी मेंस एग्जामिनेशन 2023 आई एम विशाल सालसेकर एंड आई एम जॉइंड बाय डिस्टिंग्विश एक्सपर्ट फ्रॉम विजन आई एस डॉक्टर जैसमिन वालिया मैम टू गिव अस इनसाइट्स रिगार्डिंग द क्रिटिकल एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ यूपीएससी मेंस एग्जामिनेशन थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू विशाल ओके सो नाउ वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग एज यू आर मूविंग टुवर्ड्स द सीएससी मेंस एग्जामिनेशन so it's a very crucial journey and apart from mugging up the syllabus and lot other things it's very important to master the strategy as well as revising the syllabus at this crucial juncture your views ma'am yeah definitely you are absolutely right uh, upsc mains is not just about the knowledge but also how you plan execute and all the determination and discipline that goes into it right so in this particular session what we are going to do is we are going to cover each and every aspect in quite detail which includes the academic preparedness section maintaining the physical and the mental health and also the aspects related to the confidence building and motivation so ma'am will be guiding us thoroughly about all these aspects which will be very important for you in this preparation journey so let's get started with this particular journey of our question and answer session with ma'am can we start ma'am yes please okay so ma'am my first question to you is that at this particular stage of examination generally the students are confused that what to read and what to leave for this particular examination so can you guide our viewers regarding how they can manage their syllabus very effectively uh the i think this is a very good point to start on because first we need to have an idea about the syllabus so in that uh, for effective syllabus management we first need to have an idea about which parts are more important which are less important which have been frequently asked and along with uh, that the student needs to have an idea about his individual weaknesses and stress and that's how he'll make a revision plan that's how he'll make a strategy uh, for the exam and as far as possible one should be sticking to that strategy which is in line with the syllabus which upsc has laid out okay thank you ma'am but as you have pointed out regarding the revision so generally at this point of time student feel confused that whatever he or she might have studied they are forgetting everything and this is generally due to lack of effective revision so for our viewers can you suggest something as a smart revision technique at this point of time yes the key here is revision because we believe who is right somebody who is writing the mains already has done the ground work has uh, all the basic information now he just needs to keep going through that again and again and in that revision strategy one thing is very important that he cannot really dwell into new sources at this stage right he has to keep going through whatever he has studied and in that sense also focus on dimensions which are important from the exam point of view like we have things like you know, one should know the facts of a particular topic one should think of different dimensions uh, one can also think about uh, what kind of quotes he could add or what kind of special features or charts so basically uh, the content has to be revised in a way uh, where uh, the student is also thinking about how he is going to put that on paper that aspect is very important here so as you have talked a lot about content related aspects so how important is content enrichment at this point in time because we are having a lot of content available with us yeah. so how to do further content enrichment yeah. and when to do it yeah see again uh, upsc aspirants always feel that you know they've not they've not read enough or they need to know more or a new source or uh, like this this idea that maybe i should have one more day one more right. week right that feeling is always there but one needs to have confidence in the preparation which they have done and in that sense again like i mentioned earlier no new source at this stage if you have to add content or if you talk about enrichment that just means some little fine tuning that can be done through the content which you get through all the tests which you write i'm sure students are writing a lot of mock tests so that gives them new questions new perspectives and there are approach answers which can help them with some new idea of course they cannot pick up a book at this stage but they can add all of that right. 
right and uh, if you have to talk about uh, a source which needs to be added uh, that has to be a source which can be a comprehensive source like something like a mains compilation a mains 365 right. so those kind of things uh, in the content can be added and again they should become a part of multiple revisions and that was very comprehensive ma'am thank you uh but as you have talked a lot about resources as well okay so uh, generally student tend to confuse or they are feeling some kind of anxiety that right? whatever resources they had referred till this point in time uh they generally tend to lose faith on those resources and they generally move towards as you have also pointed that they generally move towards the new resources they want some kind of new resources that can enrich their preparation yeah. right so can you suggest to our viewers that how the student can manage the resources that are available with them at this point of time again that has to be in sync with whatever we've discussed till now that you need your syllabus in mind you need the pattern of questions and you have to plan your time accordingly so in that the scope of new resources is not there but again you can always uh, direct yourself in a way that Uh, according to the requirement of different subjects you can focus on the resources which you have already prepared here confidence will become very important because you need to have an idea as to uh, you know how uh, you have uh, used the resources which were there and you've written tests so you're getting a reality check on that also that how and what needs addition so based on that some fine tuning can be done but then it has to be in sync with the syllabus with the time and of course the need of the exam okay so as you have pointed regarding this answer writing related aspects through test and multiple other things so is it advisable for a student at this last juncture that they should go and write answer even if for maintaining the momentum for the examination and if yes then what kind of resources they can refer at this point of time to do some kind of answer writing so that they also do not get demotivated yes. uh, vishal momentum is a uh, the perfect word which you've used here that's exactly what you need because uh, you might like to like uh, maybe do a little less of practice as you go closer towards the exam but you need to keep writing that is very important you have to stay in touch with the analysis of taking through dif- taking yourself through different questions and the writing per se you know right. you're going to be writing for 6 hours when you exactly. have gs paper 1 and paper 2 exam uh, so in that sense your hand cannot go out of practice exactly. the best things which can be practiced is of course any mock tests which you wish to write or previous years question starting from the last one which is going to be the 2022 going backwards those questions are ideal uh, you might have gone through th- those earlier also but they can be definitely used for practice okay okay thank you ma'am so uh, as a student is going through a lot of these things and student need to effectively manage their time as well because a lot of things lot of efforts need to be put at this particular last juncture so how a student can effectively manage their time at this point of time uh again time is key right like we said maybe i would need one more day one more week right that that thought we have uh in this sense uh, again the strategy the term which we use or time management for that matter would require an equal dedication to all parts of the exam right this is something uh, which many people find it very difficult to balance you have your general studies mains uh you have your optional you have the essay part and you have languages all these sections need due diligence so the management of time has to be in accordance to a plan which you will already set out giving time to all of these and as far as possible you stick to that plan okay so ma'am uh, in the sequential order that you have put regarding the general studies optional then i say then the language paper yeah. so for a aspirant also this particular hierarchical or the sequential order becomes and the language paper tend to be skipped from their mind and yeah. they tend to neglect or overlook the importance of this particular paper so how do you see that how important is the language paper for a civil service aspirant see all parts of the exam are important uh, it would be a sheer tragedy if somebody gets stuck because of the language right. papers right and just because of the fact that he took it lightly and you preparing you need to cover all your bases right. 
and uh, a lot of times we are very out of touch with writing language uh, papers right. right especially the regional language if you're writing the exam in english maybe you're not very comfortable with that so uh, that cannot be neglected because the day you sit for that exam it is definitely going to impact your confidence level you'll right. feel that you know what if i not comfortable with it exactly. so uh, it is highly recommended that one paper of english and one of your regional language you must write you can pick up a previous year upsc paper you will be familiar with the pattern you will be familiar with how much time you are taking to write when you write it in those 3 hours period are you comfortable with writing the script and all of those things so one paper is must you can't go to the exam without that okay okay that discussion was quite insightful regarding this academic preparedness section so moving towards another very important or significant section which is the mental and physical health because uh the challenges that the student faces at this point of time is regarding maintaining their health also and this is not only the physical health this is mental emotional and in all other aspects so my first question to you in this mental and physical health management section is that you also will agree that the quality sleep and the quality rest is very important and crucial for the student in general and at this point of time in particular yeah so uh can you suggest something that student can maintain a proper sleep cycle student can take proper rest in between at this point in time see uh, you are very right on uh, uh, drawing emphasis to this aspect of physical and mental health because as we are uh, you know short of time this is something which is highly neglected or we feel this is where we can save the time but uh, it's going to be counterproductive in that sense sleep in particular as you go closer to the uh, exam right uh, like we always take this example of athletes right exactly. closer to the tournament they tend to take it a little slower so this is the time for our aspirants also to, to do it because they are reading so much they need to give their brain proper rest so that it can you know retain all the information that's going into their nerve cells and in that sense uh, it's highly indicated that 7 hours ideally 7 to 8 hours i would say of sleep is needed along with going into this sleep uh, the important aspect is having a proper cycle of this sleep in the sense that the exam is going to be during the day right a lot of people are used to sleeping during the day and you know studying at night right so ye cycle be you know they needs to be correcting this because it shouldn't be like you know that you have an exam at 2:30 and you are actually feeling sleepy because this was your nap time exactly right so that cycle has to be corrected along with getting proper rest of 7 to 8 hours okay okay you are absolutely right ma'am in this regard but generally what we see these days that social media is also having a significant impact and this also in turn disturb their sleep cycle uh, taking or uh, kind of what we can say disturbing them physically and mentally as well and even distract them yes. to certain extent yes. so uh, can you suggest to our viewers something which is a kind of like digital detox for them yeah. just before the examination before the uh, vesa to i think we all need digital detox right yes, uh, we are all uh, stuck in that but uh, for the aspirants especially closer to the exam they want as less of uh, distraction as they can get and uh, social media and interaction with a lot of people that can definitely be deviating so we have a lot of uh, uh, app blockers which somebody can use maybe you can you know Uh, switch off your cell phone for some time at least during your uh, sleeping put it on airplane mode or delete some of the apps which are distracting you right. and this would really help to you know free up some space in your mind which you right. really need for the exam so along with mobile this will free up space in our mind as yes, well definitely. yes definitely <laughs> <laughs> okay so generally student also neglect during this time a kind of like proper diet plan proper mm-hmm. kind of uh, what we can say the healthy dieting yeah. related things right and it generally disturbs the student physically because they are generally lack in nutrients because that is going to impact their mind yeah. and also or in general also because yeah. they are not eating healthy right yeah. they may not be that active yeah. so can you suggest something on this see again uh, diet is the fuel which is going to you know keep the body running and right. the right kind of diet is very important because uh, at this stage students are 
are very careful that they don't want to sleep a lot or they should not be drowsy they should be alert and active and for that uh, you need to have a diet which is low in uh, fats and higher in protein content and of course fruits and vegetables uh, which are rich in your vitamins and minerals they are uh, something which have proven to be uh, something things or uh, items which keep your mind alert and active and give you more energy so you need to have a balanced diet focusing more on foods which are not processed which are healthier which are home cooked which are hygienic because you don't want to fall sick so close to the exam along with this of course a lot of hydration that's very important okay so ma'am uh, you have used some keywords like staying active keep oneself awake for a longer period so generally what i have seen that candidates do they consume a lot of caffeinated drink generally to keep their, themselves yeah. active for a longer duration yeah. of hour but we know that they are not very good for health and mm-hmm. in the long term they are going to impact the health significantly so how do you see this kind of potential issue yeah coffee and uh, caffeine rush or tea or whatever one indulges in uh, that sure gives you an instant boost right uh, even sugar for that matter all these things uh, they tend to pick you up right so sometimes you feel like this is a quick fix which you are getting you keep on drinking coffee and you stay awake at night but it is going to lead to crash of energy and uh, because this very uh, significantly impacts the blood pressure and the working of different parts of the body we will also have uh, some adverse symptoms like uh, some many might become more anxious with you know drinking uh, such caffeinated drinks so as far as possible these should be avoided and uh, for somebody who's worked so hard it's very important to uh, for them to understand that this is no time to look for quick fixes exactly. right so quick fixes that you are terming it so generally one another quick fix that student generally do they tend to overstretch themselves they keep active and they keep like sitting for a longer duration of hours and in examination also they will need to sit cons- constantly for at least 6 hours mm. right and in this particular process they may be getting some kind of posture related issues yeah. so uh, can you suggest something to remain active stay fit and stay fit when i say it is like physical fitness yeah, also yeah. so can you suggest something definitely uh, this problem of sitting right uh, now they say smoke uh, sitting is the new smoking it has been termed to be that bad and in that sense uh, students definitely need to te- take breaks very regularly because Uh, it's not that they have to study for one day or two day they have a very long duration to study and burnout in this case is very easily possible so to avoid that burnout they have to take breaks regularly and consciously take the breaks they can be short breaks uh, maybe they can uh, incorporate some physical activity like maybe they can do some stretching right there at their desk right. some uh, yoga or maybe they can go for a walk for 10 minutes anything that works for them but moving your body along with moving your mind is very important right so uh, when the student is not able to move their mind it generally accumulates a lot of stress and at this particular point in time when we are so close to the examination this stress due to multiple factors keeps piling up for a candidate and we know that in the stress like one cannot perform to the best of his ability yeah. so even the same will going to be with the students who is under stress so can you suggest to our viewers that some kind of stress management te- techniques that one can follow uh definitely this more the closer uh, more closer we come to the exam the more is the stress going to be piling up and in that sense uh, we have a lot of techniques which are normally used like breathing exercises right or deep meditation or music works wonders for some uh, people so whatever soothes you you have to find a way out but everybody uh, understands that you know now they are getting stressed now they are getting anxious so at that time it is important that you know you pause you take a break and you do something which can calm yourself down so that you are you know ready to go back in and along with all of this of course you need to keep on building on your confidence every day so that that stress is minimized right so in uh, managing stress how do you see the peers play an important role be it mentor be it relative be it the family member be it friend or the fellow aspirant yeah. 
all these members are there because when i see myself at that particular position i will be preferring one who will not be judging me based upon whatever i will say to him or her so can you like uh, point out some kind of importance like at this point in time what peers have yes definitely see uh, when you are struggling with something this big you know you are trying to go towards such a big path you definitely need external motivation and the right kind of peer group or a mentor or maybe support of some friends and family which you know is positive that can do wonders right especially if there are times when you're feeling low you need that kind of support ultimately it's one person's win but there are a lot of people backing that up so you have to find those people and take help okay talk to them uh, interact with them they can be aspirants who are also writing the exam like you like you can have some common things to discuss there can be a mentor who has been uh, through you uh, during this whole preparation or uh, anyone you feel comfortable with but you need definitely will get a lot of benefit with that kind of positive enforcement all right so uh, with this like we have just summed up this mental and physical health related aspects yeah. so coming to the last part of this particular discussion which is about the confidence building and motivation so my first question to you in this confidence building measures that generally student tend to avoid the taking breaks related yeah. aspect and they do not like positively reward themselves at yeah. this point in time so how do you suggest that taking breaks or the short breaks which you have previously talked about and rewarding themselves positively is going to impact the confidence of a student see at the end of the day confidence is key here in this exam right how your brain or uh, how your uh, mind or is going to be working on that particular day is going to be a lot about the con- level of confidence you have along with all the preparation this is key so uh, you have to continuously build that like i mentioned earlier also and yes you have some good suggestions here like rewarding yourself right we've been talking about developing a strategy or developing plans and once you cover your plans once you meet your targets you definitely need some positive uh, uh, pat on your back by your own self uh, without that uh, it might seem like you know where am i heading so you need to take breaks you need to take adequate breaks especially when you are feeling a little off track that will help you regain your confidence and along with that of course you need to be uh, confident in your goals so when you have targets and uh, you stay in line with those targets your confidence will keep building up and you have to focus on that all right so as you have talked about some kind of momentum that the journey goes on and on yeah. but generally what student does is they tend to overstretch themselves so if i might be like able to study for 9 hours or 10 hours then before just one week before the examination i might be stretching it to 14 hours yeah. which eventually will lead to burnout situation yeah. Yeah. and then i might be feeling demotivated yeah. at this point of time so how a student can prevent this burnout kind of situation now uh, see uh, i think uh, definitely the more closer you one goes to the exam one tries to feel ki you know acha ye bhi karna ye bhi karna so many uh, bases to cover and uh, there is always going to be something right okay. you have to remember this that uh, there's always going to be something which is going to be left the important thing is what you are doing is uh, you're doing it well and you are also conscious about not uh overdoing it especially closer to the exam because that's the time to regain your strength that's the time to prepare yourself for that final stage and just thinking about consolidation and more about planning than about actual reading of content right so uh, i would recommend students to uh, relax a bit to ease out maybe if they were studying 10 hours they need to bring it down to 7 instead of going to 14 that is uh, something which is going to help them if they have a proper sleep they are well rested that's which is uh, that's something which will definitely enhance their performance okay so what you are suggesting is that uh, don't overstretch yourself but you can bit relax yourself yeah. and that if the relaxed mind is there obviously you are going to perform better yes. at any day yeah. so uh, this positivity related aspect so if we are thinking that we are going to win a race then definitely that particular mindset is there that yeah. we are going to win the race yeah. the confidence is there in us so this particular victorious kind of mindset or what we can say a winability moment that we are 
uh, thinking that okay yeah. we are going to win if we are running this particular race mm. so how this mindset is going to help us in this examination uh definitely uh, this is uh, something which all the great motivators and uh, public speakers always talk about how visualization and how you know this system of your belief that has uh, wonders to turn mountains and in that sense you know something as simple as doing positive affirmations or maybe you know writing uh that okay this is going to be my rank things right. like this these are very encouraging and if you keep doing them repeatedly right uh, they say that the universe rewards you for that and uh, so many great people have written books about this concept so definitely it is going to work for upsc aspirants also they set a goal for themselves and then they can need to keep telling themselves that yes i can do it and i exactly. will do it exactly right so that's the key chant which they must have so apart from this ma'am uh, the inward looking attitude that you might have heard of this particular term that mm-hmm. when we are tend tend to compare ourselves with other mm-hmm. so uh, instead of doing that what we are what we should do is inward looking attitude mm-hmm. towards ourselves yeah. so how this particular thing is going to be helpful for a aspirant who is going to appear for the civil services is it okay uh yeah of course uh, in a sense it seems like uh, this is you know something counter uh, countering each other the concepts because you're going to be a public servant you're supposed to be a public figure you're supposed right. to be interacting with so many people and the preparation expects you to you know not engage with so many people not talk to so many people focus on yourself uh it might seem like a paradox but it's actually not uh, the preparation uh, because of the sheer intensity of it uh because of the sheer size of it it is important uh, that one puts in full focus right the job profile will have a difficult demand but nevertheless the exams requirement are very very different from that and you have to give a targeted approach to whatever you are getting into and for this exam uh comparing yourself with others or uh, thinking about you know how much somebody has studied or which sources somebody has referred that might uh, be again a very demotivating because everybody has a different way their mind works everybody has a different analytical capacity the way you will understand a question the other person might not so inward looking is needed especially when you go uh, closer to the exam you don't need all those distractions okay. that was quite insightful and i think our viewers will be able to get some kind of things from this particular uh, suggestion regarding inward looking approach okay so now my last few questions are like uh, you know that if we are organized we are better organized to go for the examination we will be able to perform better obviously because we are less messed up with the yeah. things so how do you see the staying organized before the examination is going to help us again uh, that uh, organization requires uh, planning other than the aspect of study and preparation in the sense that you should know about uh, uh, what all things you need to do what are the sequence of your paper where are you supposed to go where is the exam center uh, where is uh, uh, what kind of study material are you going to be carrying uh all these things need to be in play so that you don't have a last minute rush because right. we tend to get anxious then at that time and we might also forget some planning so this needs to be done well in advance okay so is this the only piece of advice that you will give for the d day preparation or any other thing that you want to share yes uh, d day preparation uh, first of all get a lot of sleep eat well uh have your confidence and keep everything ready right like from the smallest things to your admit card and your pens which you're going to be use exactly. keep a lot of extra pens and uh, if it is possible uh, one must go and visit their exam center beforehand right. right because there's no last minute rush or you know you're finding the location and that's adding to the stress you might feel that you might get late so one must definitely be uh, early a little earlier than what upsc expects so that again you get time to relax you get acquainted with the situation okay. so all these things also play a part on avoiding the last minute anxiety which you are uh, maybe at some level definitely going to have but we can just okay. minimize it to yeah, some right. extent okay thank you ma'am so my last question to you any final piece of advice to our viewers regarding last minute preparation or any other thing that you want mm-hmm. 
that need to be discussed i definitely uh, want to say this to aspirants like people who are uh, writing mains uh, they should be uh, you know uh, counting their victories in the way that they have reached this uh, particular part uh, they have come so far and they have been working very hard for a very long time more than a year at least and uh, they should have confidence in all their preparation and uh, till the last time uh, a positive mind and a lot of confidence taking care of every aspect of their life their health uh their sleep we've been talking exactly. about all these things right. in so much detail they need to be on point be confident and even while writing the exam they should have a lot of positivity in their mind ultimately this is an exam which will definitely bear fruit with all the hard work which they have already put in okay thank you thank you so much ma'am so as we wrap up this particular session for the cse mains 2023 i just want to leave you with a piece of thought that upsc mains examination not just the destination it's a journey that you have enjoyed the lessons you have learned and a lot of hard work that you have put during your preparation uh-huh. so just be confident be yourself and stay motivated for the examination just for as today's session we had talked a lot of things in very detail these all things can be tool in your arsenal to achieve the victory in this particular examination at this point in time vision ias is there to help you at each and every stage so we from vision ias just want to again congratulate you to first of all reach this particular place while writing the mains examination we want to give you all the very best for your successful journey in this particular examination stay motivated keep aspiring thank you very much have a good day thank you